the question everyone's going to probably ask, I guess, what, what was it like to kind of just know that you can kind of tell the guys to get after it finally? Um, been a lot of fun. Guys have been trying to make things normal uh, the best we can. And uh, I mean, we first team practice today, been doing individuals, guys are excited. For you as a coach with all these players, how difficult has it been for you to kind of just, you know, kind of know that this is so unpredictable and obviously coaches like to try and keep things uh, so, sort of even keel, so to speak. So to know that obviously things can change on a moment's notice, how difficult has that been for you throughout this process? Um, I tell you, it's been interesting. I mean, you don't really look forward to those testing result days for sure. And, uh, we dealt with it pretty good in the fall. And what I mean by that is, is, um, seems like to me, a bunch of guys got it. So it seems like right now we feel like we're out of the woods a little bit on it. Um, who really knows on that? Uh, I hate to even talk to you guys about just COVID. Actually, I'd rather talk about baseball. And if something pops up, it pops up. I mean, um, it's. I know it's where we're at right now, and it's been interesting. I mean, our schedule isn't even finished. Where this time last year it was finished. And what I mean is this schedule was finished. Things have changed. They change every day. Um, we've tried to communicate to the guys, Carlos, best we can that, uh, you know, things are, you know, really things are going to change daily and just do the best we can. In terms of baseball and kind of getting back to that after those questions, I guess for you, just to know that you kindly, you kind of have that, as everyone calls it, quote unquote, normal, normalcy, if you will, in terms of just the day to day operations of playing baseball and practicing. I guess, how has that been at least? Uh, mentally for some of the guys to know that they can at least get back into that routine again, hopefully. Yeah, we're, we're getting there for sure. I think guys' routines definitely got out of whack a little bit, especially last spring. I think last summer it started getting a little better. Um, I think right now it's probably the best it's been as far as that goes. Um, I mean, practice is usually around the same time every day and Really, probably the better the routine any of us can be in, the better we're going to be. Last one for me because I know. Sorry about that. Uh, last one for me because I know there's other guys here. Um, in terms of what, what you're expecting from your pitching rotation, Micah Dallas comes back. You got some other guys that can throw some some some, uh, some really hard hard tossers there. I guess what are you kind of expecting from this pitching staff, especially with the experience you bring back? Yeah, it's probably way too early to even really put any type of expectations on them other than uh, the ability to go out and compete pitch to pitch, which is probably the hardest thing to do out of all of it. And um, I mean, it's, um, you start putting expectations on it in spring training, it gets pretty tough. And uh, we obviously want to um, sprint towards being the best we can at the same time. It's a process. Um, guys getting on the mound for really the second time today against hitters live. First time in a game situation, even in a simulated game. And so really just want them to do the best they can with the day to day and get a little bit better each day. We'll go to David. So we can't get your weekend rotation today. Okay. Um, Maybe you got a cool little background there. It, it's fake. I, I don't have the cool pictures. You got the rip me. over there. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we got the uh, Texas Tech thing back there for you. I don't have the cool pictures from Omaha hanging behind me, so I got to have the fake stuff. I see oh. the rip, though, to the left. <laughs> I like it. It looks good. The Jones oh, looks you. good. <laughs> thank you. Ryder looks good. <laughs> um. Uh, Carlos mentioned Micah. I, I know he was primarily out of the bullpen. Is it is it though uh, the plan to get him back as a starter going into this season? Oh, we'd love for it to be. I mean, you'd love for a guy to go out and give you um, hundred pitches every time he walks to the mound and and pitch well. And so we'll we'll let that evolve as we go. We're going to give him every opportunity to do whatever he wants to do as we will with everybody on our pitching staff. And 
uh, put it together the best we can. That being said, man, he was awful good in the role he was in last year. Um, I don't, I don't really want to even, I mean, I want the game to tell us what we need to do and let the guys tell us what you want to do is you want them to make it as hard on the coaching staff as possible. And that means every guy on the roster. And if they do that, we're going to be in pretty good shape. I know you don't like to single out individuals, but I mean, you have, well, it looks like at least 15 newcomers in, in the pitching on the pitching staff. Is there a guy, a couple guys, I mean, that stand out and how, how many of those guys do you think could see a significant time on the mound this year? Oh, if, if I just had to say a number off the top of my head, I'd say 10. Um, picking out specific guys. Again, you're right. There's as soon as I say one name, it'll be the other. They all have the ability to do it. Um, you know, Birdsell, Brandon birdsell has been a guy that I mean, a bunch of guys have talked about because of his track record and where he's been. And uh, you know, he's a guy probably with more what you would call expectations from publications and things of that nature. Um, you start looking at um, that freshman class, um, you know, Hey Key, Chase Hampton, Nick Gorby, all those guys, um, you know, have the ability to pitch. Um, you know, Brandon Beckel, Jamie Hitt. And so there, there's a you know, we could name all of them. And so uh, ones that stand out, it's, it's been fun to watch all of them. It really has, but really all we've done so far this spring is, I mean, you're talking about against hitters. It's just simulated so far. And so we'll see as we go. As far as the freshmen that uh, the played last year, I mean, I mean, you had a decent sample size, but I mean, do you still consider them freshmen or was the 18, 19, whatever games you guys eventually got in there enough to, you know, consider them veterans at this point, veterans? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. I mean, I don't know that we ever really look at them as we look at them as baseball players. And if we recruit them to come here, we recruit them to play right away. If they don't, that means somebody's probably pretty good in front of them. And um, but as far as the game experience and as far as success and failure, what, for instance, uh, Romback and Jace had. Um, you know, in their experience, I mean, the cool thing about both them is, is uh, like Jace went out, went out to Santa Barbara in the summer, actually won the NBC World Series playing second base for them and playing for a guy named Bill Pintard, been doing it a long time. And, uh, you know, I mean, Jace played with a kid's going to be a probably first rounder shortstop out of UCLA and I'm not sure who out hit who, but Jace played awful well. And, uh, you know, Nate went up to uh, Rockford, I believe, in the Northwoods League, maybe Rochester, I think it's Rockford. And, uh, you know, and he had a lot of things to learn from from that. So anytime you're playing, it is experience. Uh, at the same time, when we look at it, when we recruit them, we're, we're kind of, we kind of feel like it's our job to get them to play the best they can each day and put them in position to have success. And if they don't, honestly, a lot of times I'm thinking, well, man, I'm not helping that guy enough. And the last one for me, uh, <clears throat> maybe a two-parter, but with the, the roster limit, I guess not, not limited, how difficult is that for you to evaluate as many people as possible in this condensed time and then – have you thought about the 30 man travel roster? And I mean, is that just another thing you got to deal with? I, or is it just a, a bonus to have all those extra people to, to travel with? Well, a couple things. We definitely have thought about the 30 man. Um, it's usually specific. It usually, when you start talking about the last guy, you start talking about two way guys who can do two things to help you instead of just one thing, definitely have looked at that. Um, the cool thing about it 
for us is, is I think as of today, we've got two lineups with eight guys in each lineup. So 16 guys. No, I'll take that back. Two lineups with seven guys. There's no DH in there. And so we got a couple guys dinged up that, that are not healthy. And so what it is, we've got 16 total hitters, which is really right. Um, it's probably, we've had years, I mean, and I can think back of years where we had 20. And so um, that actually, we're in a good spot there. We're in a good spot with some young pitchers where it might benefit them to, you know, to watch for a year, even though they don't want to, but it might benefit them in the long run. All right, we'll go to Ronald Clark. Coach sort of with everything going on, does it almost, you know, does it feel like a continuation of the season that you guys, you know, sort of started to have last season or does it feel a lot slower, you know, trickling into this and going into, you know, first practices as a team? I'm interested to hear what anybody on this call says. Does it feel like last spring is a continuation? Does anybody, anybody, I feel like it was three years ago. Like last spring, those 20 games we played, Ronald, it's like I was talking to uh, somebody a minute ago. It's pretty foggy. Like you got to bring up the games and you got to bring up what happened in the games. I, and I don't know why. I mean, I think part of it is, is because it was over so fast. And possibly, I mean, really, I might remember what I did for two weeks when they said it was over better than I do the games. Uh, I stared at this thing we're looking at for about two weekends. I know that, just watching, watching baseball. And you'd think I'd remember, but it – it put me in a little bit of a funk for sure saying, Hey, our season's over in March. That was uh, definitely different. And so it feels like opening day without playing in three years. That's the easiest way I know to describe it. And, and I'm looking at that from a standpoint of getting guys in a position where they can have success because there's a good number of them, Ronald, did not play in the summer. See what I mean? Now we tried to simulate what we could simulate in the fall, but it's not game speed. It's game speed of some sort, but it's not like, we don't have a whole lot of guys in an inner squad setting that um, if they can steal home, they're gonna steal home. See what I'm saying? Where in a game setting, if they can do that, they're gonna do it. And so there's a little bit different type of aggression, I think, when you line up to really play. Uh, with, you know, the conference schedule coming out and obviously the showdown with all the SEC teams and things like that, what do you sort of, you know, what gets you a little bit more excited? The fact that, you know, it's closer to that or you get that opportunity to, you know, get some of that competition out of the way earlier on in your schedule? And what kind of sweatshirt you got on? It's, you're going to have to go like this. <laughs> no, we're going to have to check you over there. Does that say Oregon? It might. Are you a duck? I am. I did you go are? to Oregon. Okay. I, I was one of my roommates in college was a beaver. Oh, okay. And, man, and we had another guy on the team when I was here. He was a duck. And they argued about it <laughs> continuously. And I'm telling you right now, if they hear this, they're going to call each other and argue about it. And then they're going to get on to who the best player at this position of all time was, and they're going to argue about it. So you made me think of those guys. Yeah, I graduated from there in 2014, and then I worked out there for four years at a news station. So we covered both the Ducks and the Beavers. Oh, there you go. There you go. So what was the question again? What gets you a little bit more excited about this season? Obviously, you know, knowing that it's coming up or that you have this opportunity to play some of those SEC teams and those top ranked teams earlier in the schedule. Oh, God, these guys on the call with you uh, will tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited about practice here. 
it's in about an hour and a half. And uh, when the games start here in about three weeks, I really want to grab a cup of coffee and sit in there like Joe Torrey and watch some guys play baseball the right way. And I mean, the games are the games and there's not a whole lot we can do once the game starts, but in the process of what we do today and tomorrow, uh, we can try to put them in position to be able to, to play at a high level come game day. And so um, that's kind of always been, I mean, that, we're going to do everything we can today. I'm excited about today. If you don't come out, come on. We, you're welcome. All right, we'll go to back to Carlos. Just one follow-up, Coach, uh, from what David was asking you with the, with the roster uh, changes in D1 baseball. Did that kind of change the way you all recruited for this class, and did you kind of feel like you filled up holes, or did you feel like you filled up voids in different ways because you had guys that were allowed to come back instead of having to kind of find another kid or something like that? Um, the majority of our 21 class was done when COVID hit. The one thing that probably changed on it would be um, we did commit a few guys during COVID in the 21 class. Uh, you can imagine being a 17, 18 year old young man and a baseball coach that hadn't had a baseball game in two or three months. And we all want to do something. And so we did commit some guys at a time um, without seeing them on foot maybe in the last year. And there'll be an evaluation, you know, as far as your roster and where you are and who needs to be here, maybe more so than in years past when we get to summertime. That'd be the one thing I think that changed. And then the other thing that changed is we really haven't evaluated um, the ninth and 10th graders as much as you generally would at this point. And uh, that could be a good thing. This thing could it could really be good other than uh, the standpoint of, you know, looking at the kids that are, um, it's really interesting to me what's gonna happen with the freshmen um, that were in college last year. And then they're at a junior college this year. So they had 20 games last year. They had the whole fall. They had this year, the whole year. And they're going to show up on a college campus next year and be a freshman in baseball. And so that's going to be where things are going to get a little dicey. It's going to be interesting, especially when they get a degree and all that stuff. Okay, we'll go to Eric Kelly. Coach, where do you balance, um, you know, getting guys back into the – swing of things and making sure you kind of take that time, especially with how you mentioned it feels like opening day for the first time in three years versus knowing you got to ramp it up quick with game one in three weeks. We're not going to ramp it up quick. I mean, when you start talking about our pitchers, we're going to take care of them. We're going to do everything we can to take care of them. Um, even with our position players, we're not going to go jump out here and play nine innings today. We're going to try to gradually get in there and uh, you know, get guys in, in some type of rhythm and try to take care of their legs. And um, you're going to try to be as close as you can to game ready in three weeks as you can be. But I mean, it's, I don't know that it's possible to really be mentally and physically ready in a three week span. I mean, guys are, it, it takes some unique individuals to do that. And again, you're, you're trying to grow a little bit each day and get a little bit better each day. And nobody has to be perfect. I mean, this game, if you tried to be perfect as a hitter, every time you hit the ball, believe me, you'd have, a, you'd be out of baseball in a hurry. I mean, you, you need to use all that strike zone and all that bat path to have success. And uh, that's the same thing with us. I mean, we, it's, it's, 56 game season for a reason. With some of those positional guys, uh, bringing back a lot of guys who not only have in game experience, but starting experience, how much opportunity is there for some of those new guys to break in at the position, at those positions, or is it just 
you have so much experience there that it might be kind of tough? Oh, I think the game will tell us that. I don't even worry about that. Like, I mean, it again, freshman, sophomore, junior, it, it these guys are baseball players. They're going to go compete to play, and um, we're going to try to put them in the best position to have success each day and uh, make no bones about it. We need everybody on our roster to make an impact each day, and sometimes that just means preparing to be ready for the next day. Be asking you the same question that probably everyone's been wanting to know, but just uh, how difficult was uh, the off season, and what's it like to know that you guys can kind of play ball now, uh, starting with this first practice today? Yeah, the off season was definitely uh, unconventional. Uh, we we worked really hard um, to you know conquer this uh, COVID stuff, and you know we had a lot of um, you know challenges um, that went along with it, just like everyone um, did. So um, just having the light at the end of the tunnel, having the season officially um, be uh, right in front of us and uh, just only three weeks away, we're all super excited for uh, for this big break. We didn't even get to, you know, have last year really. So um, we're, we're even more excited to be able to play ball. From your perspective as a pitcher, how much did you feel like you missed not being able to maybe go through live games in the summer or just the, the, the typical things that you guys normally do in the offseason to kind of keep your arms warm or just kind of kind of flexible, so to speak? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, as a pitcher, um, you know, those live game reps are something that you can't really practice unless you're in a game. So um, having that taken away from us, uh, it was kind of difficult, but well, we did a really good job. Um, Garner did a really good job with giving us a throwing program, and um, we, we stayed on top of our stuff. And we're uh, uh, we're we're in as best shape as you know we will be in. So um, I, I love our staff, and and we're gonna um, just have a lot of fun time showing y'all what we can do. So for you, did you have any unique workouts that you had to do? Because I know I talked to a lot of high school kids from this area, and some of them had to you know get some rocks, pick those up. Did you have anything like that? Or were you able to kind of find, find some places to kind of help yourself kind of, kind of work out? Yeah. When I, um, when I was um, in Lubbock, you know, it was a little easier to find places, but uh, back home um, I, you know, would just throw in the backyard with my brother. Um, we'd work out in the garage, just run on the streets. We kind of just had to do it old school and just, you know, yeah, like you said, find anything and anywhere, um, any, any place that was open that we could get our work in. Braxton, uh, I'll, I'll have a couple questions for you and then I'll let everyone else kind of ask. Um, same thing I asked Mike, I guess for you to know that you guys are going to be able to play ball now, I guess what's that like after the, the, the off season you guys have kind of gone through? Uh, it's pretty exciting, honestly. It's been a long time coming. Um, you know, we pretty much sat at our houses all summer um, when we should have been playing baseball. Um, and then we had a, a long fall um, with all sorts of COVID complications. Um, it, it just wasn't your typical fall. Um, and we're all really excited to be able to get back out there and uh, start playing because, you know, like I said, it's been it's been a long time coming and we're really looking forward to it. Last one for me, being a veteran and kind of knowing what it's like to play with this team and get to the College World Series, what was it like to kind of miss that in the summer and just kind of have to wait another what what feels like at least what coach Tim Tadlock said about three years for your next opening day. Yeah, it was, it was really tough um, in my opinion. And I know a lot of my teammates would agree that, you know, that team last year was special. We had, you know, potential to do more than we ever have here at tech and uh, it hurt, but I mean, that's just life. You know, sometimes things come at you unex unexpectedly and you just gotta roll with the punches and keep going. All right, we'll go to Eric and then we'll go to David. Micah, obviously, uh, Carlos mentioned that quote from Coach Tadlock about it seeming like opening day, except you haven't played in three years. Where do you feel in terms of your readiness level as opposed to maybe day one last year? Oh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm completely there ready. Um, day one last year, we, we haven't changed anything um, in our approach. Um, even when we didn't know the schedule or when we were going to start, if we were going to start a month later, we, we had kept the same approach as we always have, kept the same routine, um, did all our arm care, did all of our um, bullpens and all of that stuff. So 
uh, me personally, I'm, I'm hundred percent ready for it. Um, say I'm on track, but I know that the rest of the guys on the team and the, and the rest of the pitching staff is there right with me too. Um, coach talked about not ramping it up too quickly, even with a game in a couple weeks and a couple pretty tough games in a couple weeks. Uh, but for you, what do you need to do to feel like you'll be ready for that game day experience in three weeks in terms of being yeah game day ready um honestly it's just mostly about feel just getting on the mound um throwing to Braxton throwing to Nate um having that feeling against um batters and just kind of getting back on your feet um what it is like to be in game because you know the the offense that we have to throw against in scrimmages is going to be you know the best offense we're going to see all year so it's great practice for us pitchers um just to challenge ourselves every single day against our offense. And so um, I feel like that, um, yeah, we're not ramping it up too early, but man, we're, we're right there. Um, for you, I don't know how much you've seen of the other guys, but can you give us a little preview of what we should expect from the pitching staff this year? Um, I, I, I don't know what, uh, you know, where everyone is going to be, where the pieces are. Um, but what I do know is that this staff has the potential to be the best staff in the nation. Um, you know, I'll, I'll write home about that. That is, um, I'm extremely proud of all the hard work that we've done. We have a lot of young freshman arms that are just um, jumping up and, and just, they're, they're gonna contribute a lot. We have some transfers, we have some, you know, older guys, returners. I mean, this this is the best um, pitching staff I've ever been a part of. Where, where are we gonna see you take that big step forward this year um it, like uh what, what what do you mean in, by that in, question? in terms of on in terms of on the mound where do you think we're going to see the biggest improvement from you from last year to this year yeah um that's a good question i would say just being consistent with everything i think i did a pretty good job at that last year um but i can always get better um at, at anything really that i'm doing so i just want to be consistent um with my pitches and keep attacking the zone, keep going after the batters, and, and trying to keep keep my team in the uh, in the game. Is it weird being one of the veterans on that pitching staff now? <laughs> yeah, um, it, I mean it's you know I, I embrace it, but yeah, it is kind of weird. You know, I feel like um, last year really didn't count, um, so I really don't have that sophomore experience. You know, even though we got a little glimpse of it, but um, yeah, it's kind of weird being the older guy. But man, I enjoy it. And then Braxton, real quick, um, you know, you've got a lot of experience. There are there are a lot of guys, especially positionally, that have a lot of experience. How much does that benefit you guys and able kind of been there, done that, even though no one's ever done it in this capacity, in this kind of world, but having that been there, done that experience um, that you guys can kind of pick it up and, and get right back to it? I think it's huge. Um, a big thing that a lot of college athletes – struggle with in my opinion is nerves and you know you're just taking a big step and uh it's a, it's a higher level of, of play and the fact that we have a lot of uh mature you know returners um you know we're not going to have so much of the nerves and these guys have been here they've they've played big games I mean we have multiple guys on our team that have played in the college world series you know it's pretty much the biggest stage you can play on at this level and I think it's just a huge advantage that We've been there and, you know, we have these guys coming back and bringing, you know, their experiences into uh, this new season. And then last one, just having been around teams and knowing what a team looks like when they're game one ready, what do you think you guys need to do to reach that point to be ready in three weeks for Arkansas? Um, Kind of what Micah said, uh, get out there and, uh, you know, play some – get some live reps against one another. Um, thanks, Micah, for the compliment about the hitting staff. Uh, it kind of goes the same for our pitching staff. Like you said, our, our pitching staff's solid. Um, you know, a lot of our guys have made leaps and bounds in their abilities, and we have new guys coming in that are solid and going to be able to help us out a whole lot. So, say like getting out there playing and then, you know, yeah. All right, we'll go to David. We'll start with you, Braxton. Um, 
you know, we've, we've talked to everybody about, you know, not getting to play and everything like that. Is it a little different for a catcher to actually be able to get that rest, especially coming off uh, two years ago? I mean, do you feel refreshed? Your knees feel good and everything uh, going into the season? Uh, yeah, I feel, I feel good. Um, I've kind of been here before, though. After my sophomore season, um, I didn't play that summer um, just because of what you said, you know, getting some rest. Um, I played like 56 games or something crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been beneficial. Um, I did play a little bit this, this uh, summer though in Dallas, um, a small little league. I got a few games in, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely well rested if that's the question. Um, I know, uh, I know you guys started working out last week. I don't know how many times you've uh, caught some of the new faces, but is there anybody I mean, Coach Coach Tadlock mentioned Birdsell. I mean, is there anybody that you've uh, noticed in your brief workouts that has kind of stood out of the new faces? Yeah, um, there's a few freshman arms. Um, I don't really want to say any of their names because you know they have great ability, but you know it's you got to show it out out on the field. Um, but yeah, Birdsell, um, he's got some great stuff. Mike is coming back, uh, obviously gets outs and you know he knows how to pitch well and deep into a game um I'd say Hunter Dobbins made a huge leap um this past fall and Christmas break uh but yeah all of our guys have really improved and they're ready to go is it difficult for you guys you and Nate uh just with so many new faces I mean there's I think 15 or 16 new pitchers on the staff how how difficult is that part of the process in your job just learning all of all of their pitches and and all their mentalities I guess as well yeah it is a little bit of a challenge but we catch these guys so many times um you know we're constantly catching bullpens uh catching live pens you know scrimmages uh we constantly talk with Gardner about what we see in these guys and that's half of what it's, what it is to be a catcher, you know, the dialogue with the pitching coach and the pitchers um, and understanding what they do best and, you know, how you can get the most out of them. So, I mean, that's part of our job. It's, it's nothing new really. Um, But yeah, it does take some time. Uh, Micah, you mentioned it there. You didn't really have much of a sophomore year but I mean it was certainly a solid one coming out of the bullpen um now that you've had the opportunity to come out of the pen and start uh do you know which direction you you would prefer to go or uh going into this season um I mean personally you know I I always love to start um that's you know that's what I see myself as but uh um obviously that I, I do well out of the pen and so um you know whatever whatever really the role that, uh, that I'm given, you know, I'm going to just take it and, uh, and do the best I can for my team. Same thing I asked Braxton, I mean, not to name names, but, uh, I mean, it, has it been difficult for you to put names with faces with so many new pitchers in that, in that room with you? I mean, and also, is there a guy that maybe uh, other than the freshmen <laughs> that have stood out for you? Yeah. Um, I, Like uh, I was asked earlier, you know, being one of the older guys, I think that's um, a responsibility we have to learn, um, you know, the young names and faces early on so you can help them out and, you know, kind of guide them and stuff and and show them, you show them the ropes. So uh, yeah, yeah, we do have a lot of new guys. Um, We have a lot of new talent. And so I'm really excited for, uh, for all those young guys to show us what they, what they can do on the field. Um, But yeah, there's, there's some really good, uh, new hitters as well. Um, it's just pretty exciting with it, with it coming right up.